Some of you will discredit me, say I've no authenticity. To paraphrase Al Sharpton, you'll claim all I want is publicity. Well, the internet is a public forum. Publicity is what anyone wants when they post publicly, so I'm ready to receive some public taunts. And because I'm a trained actor, some will probably claim that this performance's purpose is merely personal gain. There are a million easy reasons not to listen to me. If easy is what you need right now, it makes no difference to me. I am white. Just in case you're watching this through your ears, hey, my ears have seen no color for most of my years. And if you're not considered white in the US of A, this isn't directed at you. You need not stay to hear the rest, though I'd be glad if you did. You'll simply learn nothing new from this privileged white kid. With that, if you yourself are white and you've not yet clicked away, I humbly ask that you stay to listen to what I'm about to say. The pain of learning you've lived with privilege unearned is a very real pain. It's a legitimate burn. And when someone gets burned, they will probably scream, snatch back the hand stung by the fire, the steam, the coals cooking the dinner, the red coils of a machine, the heat that has just branded them with blisters extreme. They curse the machine, the glowing coil for singeing their skin. Curse the machine that has no beating heart within. That's physical pain, actual, factual. And for a human being, pain of the mind is every bit as natural. So when someone says, hey, that's you in the machine, your power has burned me. Doesn't it seem a bad dream? Don't you want to curse that person for telling you so? That simply living your life has kept them in shadow? I know. I know. I know that pain too. I too know the true pain of hearing what's true. I am white. Therefore, I've been free to live in a dream. A fragile one that shatters unless I block out the screams. White lives matter, sure. But exactly how now? Can color make use of my shame? Should I apologize real loud? It's time to name what's wrong. But out loud, to whom? It's high time you and I discuss the white elephant in the room. If you're white like I am, it's time to rerun the race. The race we won before the starting gun. First place in the first place. My family name immigrated 110 years ago. But were we ever treated like foreigners? Told where we could and couldn't go? Did red lines drawn by government hands govern what lands we could claim as our own? Or could we achieve what we planned? On both sides, my family names paved with good intentions. I've been proud of my heritage, never needing to question that my four parents were good people. But the story wears a little thin as my kin were never denied for the color of their skin. Maybe you've made it through hardships I would shudder to hear. Maybe you've worked your whole life shedding blood, sweat, and tears. But if you're white like I am, you too are blind to a certain adversity. We will never know what it's like to be hurt by diversity. There's no diverging from normal when you are the norm. 
when your likeness is the image to which others must conform, and if they can't conform, must scramble for shelter from the storm, while you and I turn a blind eye, hide inside, safe and warm, secure in a story where we deserve all we've got. <laughs> An easy story to tell. A very comfortable thought. But that's just not what's up. It's what's keeping us down. It took me 38 years to really look at the ground. I'm standing on a graveyard called the land of the free. Soil snatched from natives in which the enslaved planted seeds. But I can't be racist. I had no hand in those evil deeds. I've never held a whip and watched the gashes from my lashes bleed. I'm one of the nice white guys. Hollywood told me so. As long as I'm polite, I have the right to ignore the ground below, the dark history of what has al allowed my supremacy to grow. Because I am white, I get to pretend I don't know what I know. But I know. And I admit, I was born with benefits. But can a baby build the system that benefits it? Has someone suggested to you that the gift you never knew you had was your own creation? Is that why you're mad? Because you perceive yourself blamed for the bloody and sad barriers to colors other than the pale one you have? Relax and realize that you didn't build your own cage. Yes, a cage. We live in one. It is the source of your rage. Ours is wicked pretty, white gold, but it still holds us apart. If we can dismantle our comfort, we can be free in our hearts. Free of white guilt over blood spilt, keeping us quiet. We could be holding conversations instead of beholding riots. You and I don't get to be colorblind in the figurative sense. We've chosen being blind to color. That's why we get tense when someone, maybe family, maybe a stranger, tells us our very existence is a piece of the danger a brick in the wall, a cog in the gears of oppression. But chances are, this machine's not your personal invention. <laughs> so take a good look and be kind to that burn on your palm. It has to hurt if it's to heal. And the available balm is admission that within us, white folk, I mean, lives bias, assumptions, diseases keeping us locked in the dream, the fantasy of equal opportunities existence. The waking truth is our ignorance fuels the system's persistence. There is nothing more patriotic than peaceful resistance. So resist the urge to fight for the tyrannical fictions, the fictions that tell us we're free to sit this one out. Hey, I too will miss the old days, but they're not worth crying about. Our story is not the story, but it's still a part of it. Aren't you a bit curious to discover what else lives at the heart of it? Can we please open our ears to the stories of others? With 2020 sight, Dear fellow whites, let us see, hear, and especially listen to color.